we're trying to understand how gravity affects the universe, how it evolves through space and time, and that's a long, complicated task. Fortunately, we have a, a tool that makes that much more straightforward. That's that the universe is very big, and though the speed of light is extremely fast, 300,000 kilometers per second, it, the distances are so large that it takes light very long times to get to us. So that if we look out to different distances, we see the universe at different epochs, different epochs in its existence. So we are here on the Earth with our eyes and our instruments looking out. And if we look out as far as the moon, we see that it takes light about a second to get to us from the moon. So when we take a picture or we look at it, we see what the moon looked like a second ago. That's not so important. But we look at the sun and we're seeing light that comes to us eight minutes ago. Again, not too long, although if you took a picture and had to wait eight minutes to develop, you would be upset. Uh, but you, you know, eight minutes is not so much. It's relevant though when there's a big solar flare, you can get pictures of it. The light takes only eight minutes, but the flare can take a couple of days or more to get to you and affect your navigation, affect your communications and so forth. Those are the kind of things you want to know. Those are relatively short distances. You go further, you go to Jupiter, and it takes almost an hour. It takes 40 something minutes for the light to get from Jupiter to here. So depending on where Jupiter is in its orbit, the time where we see the various Galilean satellites varies just because of the light travel time. And so we can use that as a clock to see what's going on in the solar system. You go out much further, you get past hours even to a month inside of our solar system. But to get to the nearest stars, it takes light, the very closest star, it takes life almost 4.4 years to get here. But the typical 50 nearest stars, it takes light 10 years. So you take a picture of those stars, it's not what they look like now, it's what they look like 10 years ago. But if you take a typical star in our galaxy, the light takes anywhere from those 10 years up to almost 100,000 years. That is, that is 100 plus a times 1,000 years for the light to get here. That's just our own galaxy. So when we take pictures of stars in our own galaxy, we're seeing them years ago, thousands of years ago, tens of thousands of years ago. But if we look to the nearest big galaxy, Andromeda Galaxy, it takes light nearly two million years to get here from Andromeda. So if you were a big astronomer or a class studying a MOOC and they were showing you pictures of the Earth, they were taken with the best telescope in Andromeda, what would you see? You would see no evidence of humans because that's when we think humans first started to arise on the Earth. There'd be no Great Wall, there would be no city lights, there would be no things. That tells you, you know, some of the issues about looking for intelligent life on other planets, but it tells you that even our nearest galaxy neighbors seeing us what we look like two million years ago, and we're seeing them what they look like two million years ago, that communicating with them would take a very long time. So, but that's the nearest big galaxy. A typical galaxy, the light would take anywhere from those millions of years up to billions of years, few, few billions of years. And uh, so most, the first big cluster that's near us, it takes light, you know, some tens of millions of years to get to us. So we're not seeing those clusters the way they are right now. We're seeing the way they were millions of years ago or tens of millions of years ago or 100 million years ago in the case of most and some a billion years ago. So as we look out from the Earth to bigger and bigger distances, the light is taking longer to get to us. If we look at the light now, it had to start out that much time earlier, that distance divided by the speed of light. So if we measure in units of light years, it tells us just how far back in time we're going. We will see around us a set of sample of spheres that are samples of the universe at different epochs, different times. And we can do that you know, on the scale of, of a year, you know, thousands of years, millions of years, billions of years. We can go out almost to, 15, to 14 billion years. And at that point, because the universe is expanding, it was much hotter and much brighter than it is today, and it becomes like looking at the surface of the sun. And we call that radiation, which we'll talk about later, the cosmic background radiation, because it surrounds us and 
that light is coming from everywhere. And shortly before that, we believe is the beginning of our present universe. So the big issue, the big thing that we're seeing is when we look around us, we see what we're seeing now. We look further out, we're seeing backwards in time. Further and further out, we see backwards in time. So when we do surveys of the galaxies and of the objects that we see out of the universe, we're seeing them in different epochs, just each corresponding to it. So I have another slide which shows the cosmic sphere. We live in our galaxy. We're not in the center of the galaxy. We're in a spiral arm. We consider spheres around us. We see sort of what we think of as modern galaxies, big elliptical galaxies, big spiral galaxies. They're kind of yellow colored like the sun for the most part. And they have a few other bright stars. But if we look out even further, we see the first primordial galaxy showing up, the smaller irregular galaxies. They're undergoing a starburst frenzy of activities. They show up in the white and the blue. They're much more, many of those will merge together and form the galaxy C suite, so at the present time. So the thing that we will see is that there is, we're thinking, we're making the maps of series of spheres around us. We see galaxies as they look back further and further in time till we get to a point where there are no galaxies before any stars and galaxies will form. We call those the dark ages, but that's a time when structure is starting to form. And then further than that, the universe is too hot. It's like the sun, nothing can be formed. And then the really interesting, you know, high energy physics happens in the earlier phase and we have the beginning of time. And so the thing that's the really relevant is that the universe is actually very big. And what we'll see is there are an incredible number of galaxies out there. There are, you know, many billions of galaxies that we can see inside of the spheres which, to which light can get to us. And there are many other things out there that we'll, we'll find uh, in our journey along the way.